Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. I'm your host, Hondo Carpenter. It's great to have you with us today. I'm really thrilled. Our next guest is not only an accomplished football player, he, he is one of only a handful of players who won a World Bowl with me at with Amsterdam Admirals and won a Super Bowl, Super Bowl 40 that was played in Detroit with the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Seattle Seahawks. He's also a Spartan dog. He's one of our big guys. He is, of course, Eulish Booker. And let me tell you another thing about him. He is also a minister with the Church of God in Christ, and he's a great friend. I love him, respect him, I honor him. He is one of the good guys, and it's a pleasure to have him here. Eulish, thank you, my friend. Great to be here, Hondo. Great to be here. All right. I got several things I want to talk about. Obviously, your expansive career you know the game of football. Your nephew is a star on the University of Alabama team. We're going to talk about him in a minute. But I want to talk about some Alabama players in the draft because I know you personally. Of course, I know a lot of the people who used to be part of the staff and the football support because of our relationship with Nick. But I want to get your opinion because I trust you. I want to start with J.C. Latham. This is a young man. He's monsters, size. And he, he's six six. You were six seven, but he's you know you were three twenty. This kid's three sixty. Very nimble feet. People really like him. I had a couple of people tell me they think he could be the best right tackle, pure right tackle in the draft. There's obviously a couple guys rated ahead of him as tackles, but pure right tackle. You've watched him. You've seen him a lot, Eulish. You played the position. Can you give us a scouting report on what you think of J.C. Latham? Yeah, um, I think um, it, as it pertains to Latham, um, Latham has the size. Um, he, he has the experience um, playing in the SEC. Uh, kid based out of Wisconsin, I believe that's where he's from. Um, I met Latham um, when he was in high school at IMG. Um, as you know, um, he and Tyler uh, played at IMG together for a while. Um, and so uh, that's what uh, kind of got my attention to Latham as a younger kid. Um, and I just watched him as he matriculated to Alabama and progressed year in, year out. He has all the the, uh, the physical attributes, you know, as you know, how do we say in football, he has the things that you just can't buy um, and that size, you know, or recreate. He has a size, he's 6'6". Six, six, six. Um, I think I think Latham was probably around the 330, 335. And I'm sure he may drop um, in preparation for the draft. Um, but he has, you know, he has big hands. Um, and I think as he um, goes through this process um, and, and, and gets with a gets with the offensive line coach, because I think he's had um, about two, I think he's had two offensive line coaches at Alabama. Um, and, and that's in um, Doug Marone and um, uh, uh, Wafer, Wofford. I forgot, I forget his, uh, the last guy's name. Um, but at any rate, um, I think JC he definitely has what it takes to handle the right side. Um, as he goes along, he'll get more tools in his toolbox that will help him um, as far as um, preparing and getting ready for the next level. And obviously, there'll be there will be an adjustment, small adjustment, because you know when you go from college to the league, um, everything moves a couple ticks faster. You know, you think you're you know you're king, you're king on the throne. In college, but when you get to the league, those guys move a lot faster or just a couple ticks faster. It seems like a lot faster, but you have to program your mind mentally to catch up and speed up. You know, you'll appreciate this being a Spartan dog, but uh, TJ Duck at one time told me, I asked him, what was the biggest difference from college to pro? He said, first day in pads as a pro was the first time he'd been caught from behind. Of course, as you know, he ran a 4-3, 4 40 and he said, and he looks down and it was the defensive end. He goes, I'd never been caught before in the back. And hits it was a defensive end. And he said, it was just a moment where he realized, uh oh, this is a whole, di- it is a whole different world, isn't it? Oh, I mean, it's a, it's a totally, totally different world. Of, of course, those guys on defense, they're not trying to go through you, they're trying to go around you. And so, okay. um, and JC, JC is technically, uh, I believe he's a, he's a, he's a junior. He, JC is technically a junior, and so he could have come back for another year. And so I think, um, you know, he will get more um, 
advantages of, of, of understanding the game from a standpoint of, you know, today's game is about angles um, and how you approach those angles and, and knowing the guy that you're playing against. And, um, and one of the things that <clears throat> I attribute to my success and my ability um, to evaluate and, and just even in playing the game, I had some great offensive line coaches behind though. Jeff Stoutland was my offensive line coach in Michigan State, you know, and then in Pittsburgh, Russ Grimm was my offensive line coach. And so, you know, foundational-wise, Stoutland was my foundation. A lot of the things that I give to young players um, or players that I mentor, it comes from that that Stoutland tree. And so even with my nephew, as a kid, that kid from day one, everything that I gave him, um, it came from the Stoutland tree. So I never treated him as a little kid or anything of that. You know, no, it, it was never that. And so, you know, I say that to say this, um, his approach will have to be different in the league because, you know, as far as brute strength, every defensive end, you know, they, they most of those guys are, you know, 2 260, 280 tops. That's top, top end weight. And so they're not trying to get into a physical, um, you know, uh, head-on, head-on collision. They want to use the hands. They want to swat. They want to fake out. And, and so as a as an offensive tackle, you know, I learned early on that, you know, it's a mental, a, a large part of the game is, is mental. And so you have to prepare yourself and understand the down the distance, understand what you're trying to get done as a unit from a pass play uh, perspective. And, and kind of dictating to that defensive end, and so um, like a lot of a lot of the guys, they you know they go to the BT Jordans and they go visit the pass specialists um, in the off season, and a lot of it is about hands. It's about you know removing and resetting and you know angles and dipping and diving, and and so the, the tackles are very much in control of that because without the hand usage, it makes it very hard for these defensive ends and these pass edge rushers to do what they do because they move on timing. So they have a clock in their head and they know at, at a certain point in time, um, you know, they're waiting for the offensive lineman to shoot his hands. And so without him shooting those hands, they can't do what they do 100%. So the mental game, um, you know, Latham will have to develop and, and, and enhance in the league. Hmm. You know, you touched on some. First of all, Jeff Stoutland, I mean, the guy is still – the best offensive line coach in America. Uh, the guy is a phenomenal coach. I tell people all the time, he, hands down, I've never seen a better offensive line coach anywhere. He's just elite. He is one of the best, and I'm, I think he's one of the most under-respected coaches in the National Football League. Would you agree with that, Eulish? I would have to say so. I mean, it's, it's hard for me. Because I really, you know, it's 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 like they say on, on social media, if you know, you know. So it's hard for me to gauge the level of respect from the from the outside, uh, because I hold him in such high esteem and high regard uh, for his ability. I mean, Hondo, if 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 we're gonna if we're gonna stand on one thing, I'll stand on this: the guy has has outlasted three head coaches for the Philadelphia Eagles. So mm -hmm. when a when an owner, the only way that, that can happen is that the owner has to understand and recognize your ability and what, what you bring to the table. Let's see, who brought him there first? It was uh, uh, Chip Kelly was there, Doug Peterson, and now uh, Nick Seriani. That's three yeah. head coaches. One's still there, two is gone. And so Stoutland is the mainstay. And so that just speaks to everything that he brings to the table as far as uh, just a man, as a human being, as a as a coach, as a father figure, all the above. Hmm. All right. We're talking to Eulish Booker, former, you know, college grade at Michigan State, former Pittsburgh Steeler, won Super Bowl 40 with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he, his nephew, Tyler Booker, who many of you know is one of the best interior offensive linemen in the country, only a sophomore at Alabama. And, and of course, he knows Nick, very familiar with the system. And we're talking about some draft prospects. 
Um, we just got done talking about J.C. Latham. Now I want to turn very quickly. We're going to talk about corner. And obviously he's an offensive lineman, but he knows the game. He's there. He's around it. And then we're going to end talking about his nephew, Tyler. But I want to talk to you about Terry and Arnold and Kool-Aid uh, because one of the things with Cooley McKendry and with and with um, Terry and Arnold, two excellent corners, two first round draft pick corners on this Alabama team. Now, if you don't know this, obviously Eulish and I know Nick. Nick comes from a defensive background, he a defensive backs coaching background. He was a defensive back in college, so. If you ever want a defensive back, one of the first places you're going to go look is wherever Nick Saban is a part of. Now, in my first mock draft, I had Terry and Arnold going as the first corner overall. A lot of teams, not all, have him as the number one corner because he's just a shut down Arnold Island. Kool-Aid McKendry is a guy who's maybe a little bit more technically sound, who knows how to do certain things technically. It, it, it's a 1A, 1B situation. They're both phenomenal guys. And I and because of the Raiders, and, and they're de and not desperate, but their definite consideration of a corner, I wanted to get Eulish's input. Eulish, talk to us about both guys, if you would, Kool-Aid and Tarion. Break down their differences, if you would, please, sir. Now, re and remember this, in context of the Raiders like the shutdown corners. They like to be able to put shutdown corners out there and do uh, and, and to free up some guys. So if you would talk about both of them, please. Absolutely. So from a football perspective, um, as you stated already, if you know anything about Nick Saban um, and as a player, um, the defensive backfield, those are his babies. Um, those are his guys. Most of his meeting time is spent in the defensive backs room. Um, you know, I vividly see him at a, at, at, in the Michigan State DB uh video room because back then the windows had the little glasses in it so you could kind of peek through. Coach Saban would be sitting at the front of the room or laying down actually underneath the table with his legs crossed with his loafers flopping teaching. And this was back in the Mark D'Antonio days when he was DB coach. So Saban has an affinity for defensive back. So that's number one. Um, I think Coach Saban um, it, he has a certain style he has a certain teaching method in, in which he teaches um, the game from a defensive back stand, stand, standpoint. Um, and outside of knowing the scheme from a technical standpoint of what you do on and off or, or on the field, he has a certain way that he illustrates that. And I think, and I know as a matter of fact, both Kool-Aid and Terion exemplify those techniques and those things that, that, that are required by Coach Saban if you're going to play corner or DB for him. And so when it comes to Terion and Kool-Aid, I think that Kool-Aid had made his mark earlier on in his Alabama career. And I think Terion came on really strong in his junior year um, from the standpoint of becoming a lockdown corner. Now, if you watch their games, um, most teams were fearful to throw in Kool-Aid's direction anyway. Why? Because, he kind of cemented himself as a lockdown corner. Uh, this past year, I think he spent more time being a deterrent um, and kind of being a a reinforcer from the standpoint of, hey, listen, hey, you guys know what's going to happen if you throw over here versus a lot of teams try Terry on a lot more. So Terry on was kind of on showcase a lot more because Kool-Aid had already established himself. And so in my opinion, I think both guys, are um I would both say that they're 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 both number one corners. Um take them up in the bag. Um you're gonna get get the same same type of lockdown type of corner if you have if, if that's what, what it calls for or if they gotta play zone and you know move and do all those things that corners do. And you know obviously Kool-Aid has been doing it a little bit longer than Terry on, but Terry on um in this last year he came on really strong and really cemented himself from a national standpoint, from a football standpoint, where we had to pay attention because, you know, most of the balls were going his direction. All right. Now let's turn to your nephew, Tyler. Many mm -hmm. people believe for the 2025 draft, 
He's in that top five, could end up being number one of interior offensive linemen. They really like him a lot. There is a lot of things to like about Tyler. I'm curious. Uh, what One of the things that I have heard about him that if people like is he's extremely coachable. He comes, matter of fact, one person said to me, he comes to the field with no ego. If you're going to make him better, he's all good with that. Obviously, I think his uncle Eulish had some uh, influence there because that's a lot of what people said about you. But let's talk about Tyler. Let's talk about him. I mean, technically he could play longer, but let's talk about next year. What are you hoping to see out of him? Well, um, what I would like to see out of Tyler next year, um, I would like to see um, more more hand-to-hand -hand combat um, from a standpoint of just moving uh, left to right, um, if you will. I think what a lot of people see um, or don't see is that Tyler is very astute. Um, from a academ academia standpoint. So when it comes to X's and O's of the game, Tyler is going to take the, the best path um, to securing his guy. So sometimes you don't see a lot of the technical things that you want to see out of guards per se. You know, Tyler just, he knows how to hit the sweet spot. Most of the guys that he plays against, they end up on their head at some point in the game, multiple times in the game. And that's because, you know, even as an offensive lineman, I'm like, dang on it. He just knows how to find the sweet spot and just, you know, he's like he's like the pancake king. You know, he just finds mm -hmm. a way to dominate the guys in front of him. And so, um, you know, what I often tell him is I say, look, Tyler, you know, you've kind of – you're kind of, um, you know, you're not playing um, from the for the guys that you're playing in front of now. You're kind of preparing for the next level. I mean, you cemented that in your freshman, you know, being a freshman and being in, in play at the University of Alabama. That rarely, rarely ever happens. And playing at a high level, splitting time, you know, with, with former starters. And so, you know, I told him, like, your freshman year, okay, you cemented yourself. Your second year, you know, we know, okay, this guy's a legit player. I said, so now going into your junior year, um, as you prep for a junior, junior uh, draft grade, you have to – um, prepare for the league. You got to prepare for D tackles in the league. You know what I mean? And so, um, you know, if, if, if there's a few things that I would like to see him um, exercise or show a lot more of, of his, his uh, athletic hand ability, because as I said before we started, Hondo, um, everything that I know um, from a fundamental standpoint, I gave to him early on, you know, from as far as, um, you know, Hands, feet, stance. And then as he matriculated on, you know, we just mentally talk about certain things that give you the advantage. And Tyler was a he was a quick learner. He was a fast starter, you know, because he wanted it. He wanted it from day one. Even in Pop Warner, he wanted it. Um, I often tell the story, uh, well, not often, but you know, Tyler's first day at Pop Warner, he looked like he looked like Bambi. And I was standing and I was like, oh, man, we got to take him in the backyard and get him straightened out. And so uh, we took him in the backyard. And from that point on, Hondo, I, I kid you not, he's been he's been off to the races. He's been off to the races since then. And so, um, yeah, uh, I, I, I look forward to a lot of improvements from a technical standpoint, from a mental standpoint, um, to take his game to the next level. That's awesome. Well, I can tell you, Eulish, it's always good to talk to you. I love the fact that we not only share a Michigan State bond and a, and a love of football, but our love of the Lord we get to share. And that's always fun to be with, with people that are not just brothers because we of their school, but brothers because of our faith. And I appreciate you a lot. I, great scouting report here on some great players. It's going to be very interesting to see. I want to ask you one other question if you don't have time for if you have time for sure. one. Um Antonio Pierce, I like him a lot, and he comes as a player and gets this job, and we're starting to see a trend. We, we, we saw it, of course, Mike Vrabel, former player, different kind of guy, different kind of cat. You know, you, you're seeing Dan Campbell in Detroit, D'Amico Ryans, and then uh, now you're seeing it with Antonio Pierce. I think you can put Mike Tomlin 
in that in that group as well. You're seeing a new wave come across the NFL. It's it's getting back to people who aren't businessmen. It's getting back to people who are football guys. It's getting the game a little bit back to where it used to be. I love the trend. I think it's great. I love the way AP relates to people and the way he relates to players. I would just like your thoughts on AP and then this trend that we're seeing in the National Football League. I mean, Hondo, um, I definitely agree with you. The the um, the trend in, is, is changing, and we're getting back to um, player oriented or player relatable coaches, and that's you know it's been that way for so long um, internally. You know, guys want to play for guys who've done it, guys that get it, and so um, you know we will see, we will continue to see trends. Um, in that manner, because you got to remember, it's a whole new era, um, a whole new generation of, of football players. And so, you know, the Bear Bryant, you know, what what worked back in my day, it ain't working no more on these young guys. And so you you have to approach them and treat them in such in, in a certain type of way. And so um, those are those are the things that I see. And I definitely agree. Um, the player, former player trend is, is definitely on the rise it's it's fun to see isn't it my friend oh yeah definitely 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 all right he is the great eulish booker one of a handful of guys to want a world bowl and a super bowl you know he's a good guy because look at the colors he's wearing green and white <laughs> he's a spartan dog we got to give him his ref respect there but more importantly he is a a great friend he's a fellow follower of jesus and does a lot of great as a minister with the Church of God in Christ. And Eulish, it's always great to talk to you. Hold on the line a minute. I want to tell you something real quick. But okay. remember, you can follow me on IG at Hondo SR, X, formerly known as Twitter, at Hondo Carpenter. Thanks for listening and tuning into the podcast today. You can check out all of our articles when you go to si.com forward slash NFL forward slash Raiders. We'll see you all again real soon from all of us. God bless you guys. Have a great day.